Today we're going to talk about a blind comparison here for 2019 fantasy football. Why do we do these type of things? It's to find the real value. It's to get your mind moving in the right direction. Because the last thing you want to have happen during your fantasy football draft is you draft a player and then find out you could have had better value a few rounds later, leaving you to look at your draft sheet and going, son of a bitch. What's going on, Headliner Nation? Jake, Fantasy Headliners. Hopefully you're all doing well out there. Welcome back to the Draft.com studios, where today we're going to have a little bit of fun. We're going to do a blind comparison of a couple wide receivers that we need to look at here for Draft Day for Fantasy Football 2019. A lot of times, a lot of times, people will draft based off of name value, but sometimes you overpay with name value, and that's what this exercise is all about, is to get your mind thinking not so much to say that one player is better than the other, but just to see the results at the end of it by just looking at the numbers, you may be able to find a little bit more value on draft day, and that's how you win fantasy football championships. It's finding that value. Now, before we get into these two players, we're going to break them down with a lot of stats. We're going to get a lot of numbers, not just the numbers you see here on the screen. You know how we do it. We're going to go a little bit deeper into the numbers. Before we do, real quick, just a reminder, we're giving away this autographed Melvin Gordon jersey hanging behind me. If you have not entered the contest yet, I will put a link down in the description to the video where I listed all of the contest details and how you can enter this giveaway. We're going to be announcing the winner really soon on June 30th. Do not miss out on that. And then also, our draft guide is due to drop June 30th also. I mean, the thing is going to help you dominate fantasy football here in 2019. If you're interested, go check out our website, thefantasyheadliners.com. It's available for pre-order now, and like I said, it drops on June 30th. You don't want to miss out on it. But for right now, let's get into a little blind comparison and see if we can find some draft day value. So we have two mystery players here on the screen, right? You can't see them. They're grayed out with a big, huge question mark over their face, and we're doing it on purpose. Now I have some of the basic stats up here for both players. You can see player one and player two. I'm not going to tell you who they are until we break down their stats from last season 2018. So as you can see, both of these players, they're both wide receivers. Both of them played 14 games last season. Uh, player two had a slight edge in targets, 120 to 108. Also had a, a slight edge in yardage, 1,270 yards to 1,028 yards for player one. They both had 76 receptions and player one beat him out by one touchdown on the season. These guys were pretty close most of the season. However, right now, going into 2019, there's a pretty big advantage for one of them. Let's break down a few more stats and find out which one of these guys really may have the edge and more value this season. All right, here we go. Got a slide coming up here with a butt ton of numbers, but don't get scared. It's not quite a math lesson. We're just going to dig a little bit deeper, doing it headliner style here 2019. So player one, let's talk about him first. His position rank for wide receiver right now is 27th overall. That's where he's being drafted as of right now, where player two is a top 10 option, currently ranked number 10. When you look at their ADP, player one has a sixth round ADP, player two with a second round ADP, a four round difference. Player one may end up being somebody who you could throw into your flex spot. That's going to be huge come here later on once we break down a few more of these numbers. Now, they both played 14 games. Target-wise, player two had a slight edge, 12 more targets on the season with 120 to 108. Receptions-wise, they both had 76. Yardage, player two edged him out again, 1,270 yards to 1,028 yards, just under about 150-yard difference. Now, when you look at yards per reception, player two, once again, a little bit higher, 16.7 to 13.5. But now, things really start to change. Touchdowns, player one with the advantage only by one, seven touchdowns to six for player two. Yards after the catch, another advantage for player one, where he had 431 yards to player two's 392. Red zone receptions, these are key, right? We want those touchdowns. We want those opportunities for touchdowns. Player one had nine red zone receptions, where player two had seven. Catch percentage, we don't want to deal with a whole bunch of drops. Catch percentage, player one, a slight edge again, 70.4% catch percentage to player two's 63.3. Talked about drops, player two did have one more drop, six drops compared to five for player one. 
Now target separation, if you're not familiar with this stat, this is the amount of separation between the wide receiver and the defensive player for every target. Now on average, player one had 1.41 yards of separation per target. That's how open he was. That's how much of a gap was between him and the closest defender on every target. About 0.4 yards farther ahead than it was for player two, who was at 1.04. Now, the last stat, also another one that a lot of people don't look at, but it is pretty important. It's fantasy points per target. So for every target he's getting, how many fantasy points is that really meaning to me? That's what we want, right? We want the points. So fantasy points per target, player one also led barely 2.05 to 1.99. Now, they're pretty close, right? These numbers are not astronomically apart. I mean, these two players, are they had decent seasons, but one of them is grossly undervalued right now. And we're going to get into who that may be. But before I tell you who these players are, tell me down below in the comment section, based off of these stats right here on the screen, on draft day, who are you going to take? The guy with the slightly better numbers with a second round ADP or the more value pick in the sixth round? Put it down below in the comment section. I'm going to give you a second here. Type it in there. Hit that reply button. Let me know who it is. I, I'm curious to see who's wanting to go with the value route over the name value for the player in the second round. But I think you have enough time. Now let's break it down. Let me show you who these players are and what we want to do with them here in 2019. All right, here we go. You ready to find out who these players are? Don't Google it and cheat and put it the right answer. Just come on. Don't cheat, people. Actually guess we're trying to really help people use their minds more for fantasy football this year and really identify that value by teaching people how to look at the numbers. It's kind of what we're going to dig into a lot here in the offseason. So without any further ado, who are these two players that we're talking about? It's Tyler Boyd of the Cincinnati Bengals with a sixth round ADP. He's player one. T.Y. Hilton is player two with a second round ADP. Now, I'm not sitting here and telling everybody that Tyler Boyd is better than T.Y. Hilton. I'm not doing that. I'm not sitting here and saying I don't like T.Y. Hilton. Not the case whatsoever. What I'm saying is maybe you want to reach for Travis Kelsey in the second round. Tyler Boyd kind of gives you that opportunity a few rounds later to get possibly similar production to T.Y. Hilton. That's what we're kind of looking for is maximize our draft picks. Find that value where we can. Like I said, I'm not going to sit here and bash T.Y. Hilton and tell everybody you need to go get Tyler Boyd in the second round because that's absolutely ridiculous take advantage of what his ADP is. But there are a few things that are different this year, right? I mean, we know what Tyler Boyd did last year with A.J. Green, who, who was healthy the first eight weeks of the season. A.J. Green should be healthy-ish here in 2019, at least for a little bit. But what did Tyler Boyd do at that time with A.J. Green? It was weeks one through eight where they played together. Tyler Boyd averaged 6.125 receptions per game, 8.25 targets, and 77.5 yards per game through those eight weeks. Also, through those eight weeks, he was wide receiver 12 overall in fantasy football PPR leagues. Now, for Hilton, he averaged slightly less receptions a game, 5.4, had a little bit more targets, 8.5, and 90 yards per game, a little bit higher than Boyd also. But what's going on with T.Y. Hilton this year? There's a lot more weapons in this offense in Indianapolis, right? We know Jack Mother Doyle is going to be back. We know that they just drafted Paris Campbell, who looks like he's going to be involved in this offense. You have hashtag never Funches, who could be a red zone threat. We already know that Eric Ebron is there. There's more options this year for the Indianapolis Colts than there has been in years past. Am I saying that I don't like T.Y. Hilton? No, I think he's going to be a great fantasy football wide receiver. But as far as value goes right now, just looking at the numbers, Tyler Boyd seems like slightly better value to me. All right, how was that for some food for thought here? Early morning Friday, let's get into the weekend. Just want to get your opinion. I mean, these type of things are what we need to look at for fantasy football here in 2019. Really identify that value. If I kind of opened your eyes to a few things, make sure you hit that like button. I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. It really helps us out here on YouTube. Also, if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button. We're going in depth on a lot of players here this offseason, and we have you covered for the entire 2019 season. If you're new here, put a comment down below also. Let me welcome you to Headliner Nation personally. We answer almost every comment on every video. We do our absolute best to do that. We're really trying to make an effort to grow this community and be a part of a community, not just a group of guys making football videos. It's not what we're all about over here. We really want to discuss things, debate things with you. Tell me what it is you feel about this. Does this make you want to go get Tyler Boyd and pass on T.Y. Hilton? 
Are you going to say, nah, Jake, I'm going to roll with the, the, the bigger name here, and I'm going to go with TY. Listen, there's no wrong answer here. It's just meant to really open up and look for that value. That's what's important. That's what we're teaching here this offseason. So make sure you put that comment down below. Have a great rest of your week, and we'll talk to you later.